In today's video, we're checking out an electric guitar amplifier made in Poland. This is the Taurus Amplification SH8 Cube. Now, this can either run at 25 or 50 watts into a speaker cabinet. It can run directly into a PA system, mixer, whatever the case may be. You can run it with headphones. It basically ticks a lot of boxes without all the unnecessary effects under the sun. This amplifier has a built-in clean channel, drive channel, and dedicated boost circuit over here as well as a beautiful sounding reverb. I'll give you a full rundown of this in just a moment, but you're about to hear it in the context of a mix, and then we'll get over to some isolated tones. But before we get into it, a huge thanks to Adam from Taurus Amplification for sending this out. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it down below. Here we go. Let's take a look at this amplifier up close. So on the left, we get a dedicated reverb switch and a reverb control. So we can dial in how much reverb we want at any particular time, and then run that out into our actual sound, which is fantastic. Next to the reverb control, there's also a tube boost option, which adds warmth and kind of like body to the sound. This works both on the clean and on the dirty channel. With the reverb on or off, we're on the clean channel by default. Then we can click the middle button to get over to the drive channel. If we take a look at the center of the pedal, there's a three-way toggle switch giving us two different gain styles and also a classic with H gain and boost. So you basically get a whole bunch of different options there and we'll talk more about that in the actual demo section. But you get two main voicings, one's a higher gain and one's a lower gain by default. This amplifier has a three band EQ built into it. So we get bass, middle and treble. There's also a range control, which is kind of like a mids notch and I'll showcase that coming up. The power attenuation works like this. So we either get a 25 or 50 watt mode. And then on the right of it, we can either set it for guitar, which will be going into my cabinet in just a moment, or we can set it to full range. There's also two separate other modes. We get a full range mode and a guitar mode. So for this video being that I'm going into a guitar amp, I'll have it set to the guitar mode, but if you want the full 130 watts, switch it up into full range, and then you can power a PA speaker, whatever the case may be. This amp has an effects loop built in. We get a line out for going directly into a mixer or audio interface, and our speaker output is over here. Now this speaker output will work anywhere between four and 16 ohms. All of these are labeled on the top of the unit, just not on the back. Our guitar input is over on this side here. On this side, we get a 3.5 millimeter headphone output. We also get an auxiliary in. So this is a 3.5 millimeter as well. This also has Bluetooth connectivity. You can turn the Bluetooth on like this if you wanna connect your phone to it or whatever the case may be. Now, all the way up here, we get a low cut option as well. So if this has a little bit too much bass and you just wanna sort of shave out the low end a little bit, you get that option over here. All right, let's kick it off in today's video. I've got the amp running through my mighty Marshall 2x12 back here. It's mic'd up with a Rode NT1 5th Gen and an AEA N22 ribbon microphone, and you'll be hearing a blend between them both. So we're gonna start clean in the default position, which is with the massive switch in the center and this range switch in the down position. So EQ is basically flat. I have the volume up at about four, and this is how it sounds with the reverb currently on. Great sounding reverb with it off. The great news is it still feels great to play even without the reverb, but I'm a sucker for reverb, so it's staying on. Here we go. All 
All right, so that already sounds great, but if we use the massive switch and click it up to the one position, it's going to sort of re-EQ the clean channel. Take a listen to this. So you get much more low end and more top end. In position two, it seems to be sort of dropping out the low end a little bit and giving you more of a mid boost. Beautiful. Still in the clean channel, I've just re-EQ'd everything for more of that sort of John Mayer-ish style tone. And I've got the massive switch up. We're gonna take a look at this tube boost circuit over here. Have a listen to this. We'll go uh, bridge and middle pickups. So we get more harmonics, we just get a much warmer and more compressed tone. With the pedal set the same now, we're gonna take a look at this range switch. It's a two-way toggle switch. It's been down the entire video because I want to show you what it sounds like with it up. It just helps you cut the mix. Let's have a listen. It's a great clean tone, man. And with the range switch up. So it kind of sounds to my ear a little bit like what a clom does. It brings in a little bit more treble, but also that upper mid frequency thing. Let's have another listen. Nice voicey tone and back off. Kind of prefer it on. Let's try the boost switch. So this works on the clean and on the drive channel. I've got it set up beautifully, but if you need to turn it up, you can use this boost level over here, but this is how it sounds with it currently off. Loud is always better, right? I mean, that just works. That's really cool. Over to the drive channel. Now, unlike a lot of amplifiers where the clean channel is by far the best and the drive channel can be lackluster or vice versa, this is really well matched. So this is the clean channel. This is the classic gain circuit on the drive channel. Such a great blues tone. Now, if you want to use the boost, you can. Now, if we take a look at the pedal, that's with the drive at 12 o'clock. So it's still not that high gain, which is fantastic. We can crank it up a little bit further. Here we go. And with the boost. So you get lots of sustain and it just makes sense. You can go from a great sounding clean tone over to a great sounding dirty tone. This classic gain doesn't have too much drive, which is great. That's sort of like your classic rock and blues setting. If you do need more gain, you can simply push this toggle switch up and we'll get there in just a moment. But if we're in the toggle switch down position, we get the same dirty tone that you just heard before, but when I click on the boost, it's going to get much louder because it brings in this tube boost circuit over here. And I'll show you that right now, but I'm gonna turn the boost level down. So here we go, this is clean again. <laughs> oh, that is so loud. <laughs> so yeah, that really kicks out a whole lot of wind. If you can't get heard with that over a drummer, I'd be really surprised. Up next, we're gonna test out the high gain circuit, but I'm gonna start on the classic gain just as a point of reference. Here we go. High gain. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. All right, so that's really cool. Plenty of sustain. The boost circuit works beautifully. Like most great tube amps, if you turn your volume control on the guitar down, you can get it to clean up. And back up. It will actually clean up more without the tube boost circuit on, so I'll turn that off. I mean, this thing sounds great and it's very easy to use. I know there's a lot of controls on it, but once you get a feel for it, it's actually very intuitive. Let's wrap this video up. I'm gonna talk about what I really love about this and the things that you need to know. So the first thing is, if you plan on buying this, you do need to buy a proper speaker cable to run to a cabinet. This would make gigging life so much easier because you've got a great clean channel platform that you can run other pedals into. I'll do a follow-up video coming up. You get that effects loop so you can run your delays, all that kind of stuff into it. We can run this into a PA system mixer or audio interface thanks to the line output on the back. You can practice with headphones. It just offers a lot in a very small and lightweight package. And it's brutally loud, man. This thing throws so much wind. And if you're in a pinch and you need to power a PA speaker, for example, you can switch it to full range mode and get the full power of this running out into a line. Now you might be saying, hey, why would I need to do that? Say for example, you're mid set or whatever the case may be and you need to play some music don't have all the stuff that you need, you can use this as a PA amplifier. How great is that? So it really ticks a whole lot of boxes. I was first introduced to Taurus amplification from the servo pedal, which was one of the best boost pedals of the year. And I'll link that video up in the cards. And this is really that good. I'm a huge fan of this. There's only one small thing about this amp I'm not a huge fan of, and that's if you've left Bluetooth on and you power the amplifier back on each and every time, you hear this little chime kick in and then a ready sort of signal letting you know that Bluetooth is ready and good to go. Now you can't turn that down. So you can even have the volume of the amplifier all the way down and you still hear it, which I'm not a huge fan of. I would have much rather have just had the Bluetooth LED indicator on the top, but that's really nitpicking, but it's just something worth mentioning. I much prefer just leaving that off and you never hear that chime again. At the end of the day, Taurus amplification make great stuff and it's something different. So. I'm gonna put this in the best of 2023 in my end of year wrap up. This thing is unreal and you'll see it more on the channel moving forward. Thanks for watching, my name's Shane. You can check this out in the links in the description box below. Catch you soon, see ya.